You're muted. Nope, still muted. It must be at the official end. There we go. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the Township of Duro Dummer on our council meeting of the 15th of September, 2020. I remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded and is being live streamed on the township's YouTube channel. Now the closed session of this meeting will not be live streamed, but the remainder of the meeting will be reflected in the minutes, which are the official record of the meeting. We'll be holding the meeting as though we are in the council chambers and we'll follow our regular policies and procedures I ask members of council to raise your hand if you would like to speak on a matter and I will call on you. When I call for the vote, I will call for all those in favor followed by all those opposed and you will physically raise your hand to vote in a manner that you wish to vote. So I'd like now to call the roll and you can raise your hand to state your presence. Deputy Mayor Carl Moher is with us. Thank you, Carl. Councillor Watt. Councillor Landsman and Councillor Watson. For the record, all members of Duro Dummer Council are present. And also our staff who will be joining us when appropriate. Our temporary CAO is Martina Jade Hartwick, our chief building official, Brian Fawcett, our manager of public works, Jake Condon is on the line sure. with us. Administrative Assistant of Municipal Services, Jessica Mac MacArthur is with us as well. Senior Administrative Assistant, Vanessa Sweeting, and Administrative Assistant, Legislative Services, Nic Nicole Zenner. So one big happy family, we're here to try to deal with the issues that are on the agenda. So with everyone present, I will officially call the meeting to order. And we respectfully acknowledge that we're on the treaty and territorial uh, land of the Mishi, Shalig, and Ishebeg, And we offer our gratitude to the First Peoples for their care for and teachings about our earth and our relations. May we honor those teachings. Would you please join us for a moment of silent reflection? Thank you all very much. A reminder to members of council, if you have any pecuniary interest to please state that now. Okay, see no hands. The agenda that is before you for this September 15th, I would like a motion please to approve that agenda. Moved by Councillor Landsman, second by Deputy Mayor Moher. All in favor? All opposed? That motion is approved. Adoption of the minutes. We have a special meeting from the 24th of August and the regular meeting of the 1st of September. A motion please to receive and adopt those minutes by Mr. Watt and seconded by Mr. Moher. Is there any discussion on that motion? All in favor? All opposed? That motion is approved. Any business arising out of the previous minutes? Any business arising that you would like to discuss? Seeing no hands, we move to delegations and petitions and public meetings of which we have none. Other business and staff reports. A building department update from the building department. That would be a good place for that to come. And uh, Brian uh, is here, Brian Fawcett is our chief building official, Brian, welcome. And we would love to hear your report. Thank you. Uh, so I, I drafted this memo just in response to some concerns, uh, questions that have been raised regarding backlog or delays within the building department. Um, I wanted to just give a bit of backstory to where we've been at over the last couple of months. So COVID-19 obviously caused unprecedented changes to the construction industry, uh, many effects of which we're still seeing today. Uh, the, in mid-March of 2020, the municipality, with guidance from the province and the health unit, made the decision to suspend normal operations in the municipal office by declaring a state of emergency. As we wandered into the unknown future, 
uh, regarding the severity of the spread of coronavirus. Various public information packets were distributed from um, many departments, uh, building department included, to advise our stakeholders of what changes they would need to expect and anticipate. On March the 18th, a memo was made public from the building department outlining the suspension of building permit services, uh, issuance, apologies, and delays in other services as the building department was deemed a non-essential service by the government, uh, with the exception of emergency related powers, uh, such as those related to building collapse. Uh, the tail end of that memo, we made a statement that uh, we anticipated significant backlog when services did resume to normal and we appreciated everyone's patience while we responded to those service requests. During the months of March and April, uh, we did not issue any non-essential permit applications. Um, we issued one permit application for a restaurant and some replacement septic systems, which were allowed under the uh, current act, but that was it. On May 19th, the provincial moratorium on permits, uh, which had been in place for over two months, was finally lifted. That opened the floodgates of permit applications. However, the processing of those applications was slow as many applications were piecemealed, missing information, they didn't conform to applicable law requirements, et cetera. So with staff working from home, it was often difficult to correspond directly with our customers, uh, many whom had high expectations of service being back to normal. During March through June, I, like many others in our office and greater community, had additional personal obligations hoisted upon me. I was the primary person of expertise within the department and the bulk of service requests needed to be answered by me with supports from staff and other agencies. During the course of these months, I received a plethora of praise from ratepayers and contractors during our interactions, often thanking me for the uh, speediness of the replies and the quality of the information that they were receiving. In July, daycares were allowed to be reopened and my children were able to attend a full-time daycare, which allowed me the opportunity to return to the office on a quasi full-time basis in accordance with our safety plans. I worked through the backlog of applications, handling an unusually high volume of inquiries, uh, permit applications, uh, et cetera, given the circumstances. I found many people wanted to pretend that things were back to normal and in reality it is and was far from normal. While the building department staff continue to provide a high level of service to our, our customers, it's been brought to my attention there are a vocal few who have raised concern with members of council, which is why I drafted this memo today. In many of the circumstances that were brought to my attention, the individuals in question were submitting incomplete applications, often missing applicable law requirements or even the basics of sufficient information on their drawings. The number of permits that we've issued this year compared to the last two years is down. However, uh, during the course of August, we issued 21 building permits and 10 septic permits, which is about 60% higher than average. I'm happy to say that as of the date of this report, uh, we are completely free of permit applications. And as of today's date, um, we have no outstanding applications either. And I just wanted to touch on um, an issue that if council members are presented with a ratepayer who is dissatisfied with the service that they're receiving, Council members should follow the uh, proper support channels, having that person contact the department manager first. And if they desire to elevate their, their service request, then the, the rate payer or the customer, the contractor, whomever, that person should contact the CAO. Members of council should not attempt to liaise for the customer as it also often causes confusion and creates liability for that member. Uh, it's been unfortunate that in some of these circumstances, I've received information from third parties who've reached out to me and provided me with more information regarding the nature of the issue, um, which has unfortunately caused delays and confusion regarding the service requests. Uh, I just want to close on a happy note in that at no point during the course of this pandemic was Ms. Pally ever in breach of our statutory obligations regarding the timelines of issuance of permits or conducting inspections, and we are continuing to provide exemplary service. Uh, I'll just close that the recommendation before you is that the building department memo 2020-08 dated September 3rd, 2020 regarding building department update be received for information. Good. Well, thank you, Brian. And I do think some of those things that you've mentioned in your report needed to be said. We're in a, a new generation of the way things uh, are to be done these days, and uh, we're trying to keep up with the times and it's a good uh, Reminder for all members of council to follow the proper protocol when dealing with ratepayers. That way it's fair to everyone and it gives staff the appropriate uh, time to respond in the appropriate way. So I, I'm sure we can all cooperate with that. 
Are there any questions or comments about that report? Carl, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. And uh, I recognize that you've gone through a very uh, stressful, busy period here. But I was involved with a couple of these. And I think what bothered people the most was that uh, there was a note on the voicemail to say that they would not get a reply for five days or for up to five days. I wonder when, if we get into a, such a thing again, is it possible to have maybe your uh, clerical assistant to call them and set up, let's say, a timeline to say, if it's this Friday that we'll call you next Thursday afternoon. Uh, some of these people feel that, you know, they're just staying at home waiting for your phone call. And um, that frustrates them because no information is, you know, their imagination runs away with themselves. And um, I, I just wonder if that would be possible um, a quick phone call to say, you know, this is what's going on, just to remind them that I can't do anything further than, you know, next Thursday afternoon, best guess is when I'll be in touch with you. So they can stay fairly close to the phone or whatever. Uh, the other thing is regarding handholding. Um, I was involved with a couple of those as well. Uh, some of them didn't involve you. Some of them involved uh, another agency that I have, I'm on the board. Um, these some, some of these residents, this might be a once in a lifetime project and they don't know. Um, do we have people in the community that we could give a list to, to say maybe project managers or whatever that says, you know, this, this is the process that gets you through the, the auton autonomy conservation or the township building. Um, these people are dedicated people. They want to move forward, but it, it is a once in a lifetime and they, they are floundering. And, um, and the third point I want to make is um, referring, having them call you, director, the manager. I ran into that too as well. There were one, at least one call that was not returned. And I guess if I get a referral, I plan to still refer it to the CAO and the CAO can give it to you or to whoever else, because I would hate to be in a situation of, of you know, putting people off and, um, you know, there needs to be some process governance to it that, uh, and I would like to continue doing that. That's my thoughts on it. Um, and I, re I recognize that, and I appreciate you doing your effort to get back to normal. That's great. And a lot of people have been very happy once they get it, once they pigeonhole you and talk to you and get approval, they're quite happy. But sometimes they, you know, a lot of these people are off work and the imagination runs away with themselves. And maybe a quick phone call might be in order to, to kind of keep them part of the solution. So that's my two cents worth. And uh, hopefully we don't run into it again, but with the way the province is going and the number of cases, um, you never know, we might be. Point made, uh, Carl. And I, I do have to agree on one, on one point. I know uh, we, the building department, staff, uh, council, people involved in these things every day, they, they understand there is a process. And, but uh, Joe Average out there, uh, maybe building a garage or, or uh, doing something that they might only do once in their life, the, the reality is they haven't got a clue what's involved or what you need to do or what you don't do. It's fine if they're, uh, if they're a contractor, they understand that you have to do this, but th there are so many average people who just want to do something and maybe don't even know you have to have a permit for it. So I think we have to have a little bit of sympathy and understanding for the average guy uh, doing something. Maybe it's the only time in his life he's ever going to do it. Anyway, we're just uh, speaking out loud here, Brian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you're hearing what we're saying. And uh, uh, we know the department is being held in a, handled in a very professional way. And we are very much appreciating it. Any other comments before I ask for a motion, please? Sheila, go ahead. Yeah. No, we're not hearing you, Sheila. No, you are unmuted, so it must be something at your end. I don't know what. Maybe you turn your mute on and off again. No, I'm sorry. Okay, anybody else want to make a, a comment if, in case Sheila can maybe fix that problem? Okay. 
One more time, Sheila. You're mute. It's muted on the screen. Unmute. Okay, now try it. Can you hear me now? Yes. I didn't do anything, but um, sorry. I think Brian. I was one of the people who was in the group that uh, had some phone calls and and uh, emails, and I guess from my perspective. When somebody calls me, it's for any number of reasons, because they, they know me, they know I'm on council, they don't know who to talk to and things like that. And I listen to what they say and I have forwarded you um, some emails of, from people that I've gotten. So I, I guess I'm not suggesting that's hand-holding or anything like that, but um, I have forwarded them to you, but I do listen to what the people say and I do take it down. So <clears throat> that's it. Okay, fine. Okay, Brian, a wrap up comment, and then we're going to move on. Yeah, I appreciate. Uh, I, I just wanted to extend a, a courtesy. It's not in my memo, but uh, just a courtesy to all members of council. I appreciate um, the volume of inquiries. I know the volume of inquiries I get, so I can only anticipate the volume of inquiries that you get about everything, as opposed to just being in the <clears throat> in the cavity of building department uh, issue and stuff. So. I do respect that um, and, and appreciate that and, and thank you for working together with uh, that we all have a common goal here, which is to leave our ratepayers satisfied and, and leave them with the information that they have that they need. Absolutely. Um, my struggle is just that I can't legally, uh, well, statutory obligations prevent me from providing advice, which is oftentimes what, um, what the ratepayer needs. Uh, and I believe there's actually a implementation in our service delivery review for uh, the hiring of a comms student to produce some literature um, that's aimed at the township as a whole, but the main focus of that was in fact the building department um, to produce uh, literature aimed at uh, the average person who doesn't understand the lingo and that sort of thing. So uh, look forward to hopefully getting council's approval at some point in the future for that item. Um, because I think that'll that'll really benefit the general rate payer when when that time comes. Yep, we've got to continually get better, and you know we're all in the same boat here. It's about communication, and it's not what you say; it's how you say it. And I think we we all need to be cognizant of that, and uh, people need to be talked to properly. Carl, last comment, please. Yeah, just a, a quick comment. Uh, is there anyone, Brian, in the community that uh, would act as a liaison for them to deal with, uh, whether it be autonomy conservation or building department? Uh, I know there's some people we see at Committee of Adjustment, but quite often. Yeah, there, there is a few. Uh, we, we can't unfortunately provide names of those contractors. Uh, they have to set, sort them out themselves. Um, but a quick Google search would, and that's usually the recommendation I give if somebody saying, this is way too complicated for me. I just need somebody to tell me what to do. I say search Google for construction project managers. Okay. And that will find well, that would help. people that they need. Yeah. Yeah. Google search. Okay. okay, fine. That's a start. That's uh, that's good. Okay, uh, the motion that we would uh, expect to approve here is to receive that report with thanks from Brian, who will make that motion, please. Councillor Landsman, second by... Councillor Moher, all in favor? All opposed? That motion is approved. Moving to item 9.2, and that is the sale of surplus equipment. Jake, our manager of public works is on the line and Jake, we are now looking at you and it's all yours. Thank you, Mayor Jones and members of council. I'm here to present a report on the sale of a uh, surplus snowplow truck within the Public Works Department. Uh, you have the report before you. It's self-explanatory. I won't uh, read through the whole thing. I'll just highlight it. The um, new snowplow truck has been received, leaving the 2005 snowplow truck surplus to the Public Works Department. And staff would like to begin the process to sell that uh, truck as soon as possible in an effort to obtain the best value for the unit before the winter season. My recommendation is that the public works report before you regarding the sale of surplus equipment be received and that council declares the 2005 Sterling snowplow truck surplus to the public works department 
and further directs the public works manager to proceed with the sale of the unit by form of auction. We generally oh. use gov deals for this and we've had good success with that. Good, thank you, Jake, right to the point, well done. Any questions or comments? Heather, go ahead. Sorry about that. Uh, no questions or comments, actually. I was just going to uh, make the motion to approve the recommendation when you're ready for that, Your Worship. That's great. We're ready for that now. Will anyone second that motion, please? Councillor Watt, any discussion? Uh, Carl? A couple of questions. Uh, Jake, what kind of dollars could we expect for the sale of such a 2005? Um, well, it's it's hard to say, Carl. It is auction based, so um, I would. It could bring anywhere from thirty to okay. twenty to thirty to forty thousand dollars, depending on the the uh, market. Yeah, and the second. Uh, question I had, I think uh, we had discussion whether it was a resolution of the books or not, but um, we have one uh, snow route that we contract out each year. And I, I think it's been a while since we've looked at that, whether we need to continue with that or maybe bring it back in house. And the reason why I raise it is it does cost a lot of money for that contract. And one of the big advantages of having a, let's say it was in house, the body that runs that truck during the winter time could be available during the summer for construction projects in the township. I wonder if at some point or another we should, not right now, but uh, we should be looking at that. Do you, maybe a three, eight, or maybe Martina should help us with this. Is it appropriate that maybe we have a resolution at some point to, to look at that again, to build a business case um, on whether we should continue with the contract or whether we bring it back in house and the advantages plus and minuses. Yeah, I believe that should go on a, a future meeting. That is, uh, you know, it's not on the agenda tonight, but I think that's a good discussion for the future. Martina, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, there is a motion on the floor. Um, so uh, the current motion would need to be dealt with before a new motion could be introduced. So just as a clarification point. Okay, is there anyone who wants to speak to the motion itself, please? Okay, the motion is to follow the recommendation and move ahead. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, Carl, if you wish to make a motion to instruct uh, staff to bring a report to a future council meeting over that. Uh, Martina, before I make such a motion, um, is there any chance that one might be already in the wings to be, to be looked at? I remember discussing you know. it maybe formally or informally at some time in the past. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, um, it is a, a concept that Jake and I have been uh, looking into, um, not for 2020, uh, not for the 2020, 2021 season, no. uh, but possibly for 2021, 2022. So it is something we are looking into. Okay, so that's a work in progress. Maybe we can just leave it alone and let staff uh, bring that report ready. They're already on it, so sure. they will bring it forward. Okay, okay. thank you uh, very much. That motion is, did we vote on the motion? Yes, we did. Yes. Okay, okay 9.3. This is the HR Committee and Service Delivery Implementation Committee. The terms of reference. Of course, we've had our consultant study, uh, took a, a great deal into consideration and is making recommendations after recommendations, all very positive. And this is kind of step one to get things going. Martina, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the at the special meeting held on August 24th, uh, we did receive our service delivery and uh, organizational review from Tammy Crothers. At that meeting, Council passed a resolution 2020, uh, sorry, 2020 uh, 294. Uh, which said that the draft service delivery review report dated August 24th, 2020 be received and approved and the following actions be approved. That a service delivery implementation committee terms of reference be approved for council to volunteer and request to work with the management team to prepare an implementation plan. That an implement implementation plan be presented to council for review and approval. That the final draft service delivery report be sent to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing 
uh, no later than August 31st, um, and that the final service delivery review and organizational report be posted on the website no later than September 18th, as per the agreement with uh, for the Municipal Modernization Funding Program. In response to this resolution, staff have drafted terms of references for both an HR committee and a service delivery implementation committee, which are attached to the report for Council's review. These two committees were strongly recommended in the service delivery and organizational review. The HR committee is recommended to be made up of all of council, whereas the implementation committee is staff based with a council appointee. Both of the committees will receive uh, will report to council in all minutes containing recommendations will need to be approved by council along with any requests for resources such as training budget or guest speakers. There is no financial impact at this time for both of these committees, but they will create a need in the future for additional staff time and resources and may bring requests for resources to Council in the future. Uh, the recommendation that is before you is that the report 2020-47 dated September 4th regarding the terms of reference for both the HR committee and the service delivery review implementation committee be received and approved. And further that council appoint a member to sit on the implementation committee and that staff bring back a list of staff volunteers for council approval. Okay, thank you, Martina. We might point out too that uh, this impl implementation committee is going to be extremely time consuming and very, and very involved. And we, we're gonna want one member of council on that. The HR committee, of course, will involve uh, all of council. So we, uh, we do need to uh, receive that report and uh, have one member of council willing to uh, sit on that committee, knowing full well uh, the commitment that uh, you'll, you'll have to make. Carl? I'd like to put my name down as volunteer for the uh, service committee if, um, um, as one of the, if somebody else wants as well. So, but I'd like to, uh, I think I've got the time right now to, to, uh, to, to work in that committee. Okay, good. Thank you for that offer. Anyone else? Okay, I'm seeing no other hands then. Uh, could I have a motion to receive that report uh, and approve, uh, receive and approve the report and appoint Deputy Mayor Moher as Council's Rep on the Implementation Committee. Tom? You're muted, Tom. Yes, I will make that well-worded motion uh, to go with the uh, receiving of the reports and to uh, select Carl for the Implementation Committee. Do I have a seconder, please? Sheila? Uh, yeah, yes, I will second it. I just have one question. Go ahead. Uh, that's for one year, is that correct? Martina? Uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. The council representative will be for a one-year term, and then it would be, come back at the end of that uh, that business year. Reasonable. Mm -hmm. Would that be included in the motion? It's actually in, it's uh, in the report. Sorry, that through you, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor. It is in the terms of reference for the committee. Okay. Yes, I, I've seconded it. Okay. Carl, final comment, please, on the motion. Um, just a question of clarity. Um, to, through you to Martina, um, the HR committee includes all of us. Right. And one of the things that we learned through the whole review exercise is that our HR, uh, we need HR support in our municipality. And I'm wondering, <clears throat> uh, you have a good start. You know, there's lots of good points in the HR policy and service delivery um, terms or reference. However, um, once we get a, an HR expert, there's probably going to be some changes to this. Um, by approving this now, are we going to circumvent or prevent some changes from taking place? Because I think all of us are not experts in the day-to-day -day human resource uh, field because that has changed hugely in, in recent years. So just wondered if your comments, Martina. Martina, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Uh, absolutely, Deputy Mayor Moher. I totally agree that we do need uh, HR assistance through this process. Um, in the terms of reference in section eight, it speaks to amendments and it says that amendments to the terms of reference can be made by council. So the, 
the HR committee with the um, the HR consultant, once we um, have one, would be able to make those recommendations and then they would come to council for approval and amendment to the terms of reference. So we can adjust them as the committee and council sees fit. So we have enough enough vers versatility to, uh, to be able to do things That's like right. That. This would get us started yeah. and then we can amend and, uh, and change as we need to going forward. Carol, last comment, just, please. Just one final point. There's no number two. I must be a typo. Oh my the... gosh. <laughs> you are very correct. We will get that uh, amended. So number eight will become number seven. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the motion is on the floor and we're gonna call for the vote, please. All in favor. All opposed. That motion is approved. We move to 9.4, and that is the issue of the boat launch and the dock that's located by Warsaw United Church. Martina, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So staff have been approached by a local resident regarding the boat launch and dock adjacent to the Warsaw United Church at 925 Water Street. This resident has placed an offer to purchase on the church. As part of the sale, the resident would like to work with the township to ensure that the public can still use the dock and boat launch once the sale is complete. The church board and the township have operated on a handshake deal for as long as anyone can remember to allow the public to use the area for access to the river. The township built the existing dock and it is unclear who installed the existing boat ramp. The township has completed occasional maintenance along with waste connections and providing a porta potty for the public to use at the site. The new owner would like to allow the public to continue to have access, but they are rightfully concerned about liability and their ability to insure the property. In this regard, they're requesting that the township enter into a lease agreement with them for the lands and that the township would cover the liability for the lands accessible through the public through the township's umbrella um, insurance policy. Staff have reached out to our legal team regarding the prospective arrangement. In response, our legal team are able to draft a lease agreement that would protect the township allow the public to use the land and provide liability coverage to the future owner. The owner would like the township to pay a lease fee to help offset the taxes which will be collected on the property once it's transferred out of the church's name, along with the higher than normal insurance costs that the owner will carry um, for the future because of the proposed public access. Staff have also, also reached out to our insurance provider to inquire about the possibility of adding the lands to our general liability policy. They state the following, there would be no additional premium for taking this on. The only impact would be your lot to your loss ratio. Uh, if there was, sorry, the only impact would be um, if your loss ratio was affected as this would impact your premiums in the future. As the township would have a firm agreement with the future owner instead of the existing handshake deal, we would be able to add this property and its infrastructure, the dock and the boat launch to our maintenance schedule and budget for ongoing operations. There is a financial impact. Uh, there would be a one-time cost of having a lease drafted, uh, which would be approximately 1500, and it would also need to be registered on title, which would be approximately 400. The ongoing cost, um, should this agreement be put in place, would be about $6,000 a year in lease fees, and the allocating of an annual budget for maintenance. The cost of the waste um, pickup and the porta potty are already part of the township's operating budget. Um, the prospective buyer or prospective purchaser um, did note that he sees other options possible for this site if um, council did not want to go through with this arrangement. It's possible that someone else could purchase the property and uh, redesignate it as a residence or a commercial place, um, or it, it's possible that they could simply not provide access to the, in, to the public in the future. Um, at this time, there has been no other proposals come to council or to the township uh, regarding this site. There has been rumors and, uh, and casual discussions, but no other formal applications or discussion has taken place. Uh, the recommendation that is before you is that uh, mm -hmm. the report dated September 4th regarding the boat launch and dock adjacent to the Warsaw United Church be received and that council provide direction to staff on whether to negotiate a lease with the prospective purchaser and bring it back to council for approval as soon as the lease is ready. Okay, thank you, Martina. Now it's up to council to decide uh, what to do. And of course that facility, the boat launch and the dock has been part of everyday life in the village of Warsaw, probably since Tom was a little guy. And that's <laughs> going back quite a while. 
So it's been part of the community for a long, long time. I'd hate to try to stop somebody from using that swimming hole, but anyway, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, yeah, my, my time and then some, I think. Um, and I guess when this uh, rears, rears up, it uh, kind of brings new light things because, I mean, I've lived here a long, long, long time and, and I always thought that we the township did own it. I, I thought the dividing line was kind of about where the sign was that said, you know, uh, this is public property once I've ever, but obviously this uh, changes things dramatically. Um, I, I guess I'm looking $6,000 a year in lease fees. I mean, I, I, it does sound like a lot of money. And I mean, that 6,000 years is going to add up and do a lot of money over the next few years. I wonder, is there uh, any possibility of uh, seeing if the church, and, and I mean, we've done it before and we could pay the severance like that is sever off that and the township actually own that piece of property rather than uh, try and lease it. Because I mean, that's, that's going to be quite a financial impact over the next few years. And I realize that, you know, there is no cost of things when we're looking at our rate payers, but it is something that I'm wondering if we could even look at. And that's what a potential motion I would hope would, would address, allowing, allowing that type of uh, thinking to take place. Martina, go ahead. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the resolution uh, does at, um, ask council to provide direction. So if uh, council wanted staff to investigate the option of a severance as opposed to a lease, that is something we could do. That was briefly talked about with the prospective buyer. I don't believe that's the route they wanted to take, but um, council could provide direction for us to look into that further and see what could be allowed. Um, it's really up to what council would like staff to do on this case. We need to look at all options. Follow up, Tom, before I go to Sheila. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I totally would uh, support that because I think the liabilities down the road for us and for the landowner would be would be totally negated if we could go that route. I mean, it's a lot on them, you know, being owners and us being leasing and, blah, 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 and same with us <laughs> otherwise insurance wise. Uh, everything. I think it would be a much cleaner deal for both sides if we could just purchase that chunk of property, you know, a certain amount of it and keep it, put it in the township name. And that's likely where legal advice and insurance advice will come in. And that's what we would give staff the opportunity to pursue. Okay. Go Absolutely. ahead, Sheila. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question, I was going to suggest that severance be considered, but what would happen at the end of the lease, say five years, if that purchaser decided to sell it and the new purchaser didn't want to lease it out. That would be very unfortunate. Martina? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that is something that uh, we had briefly talked to the prospective purchaser about uh, through our legal team. Um, we are suggesting that if a lease or discussion were to go forward, um, it would need to address items such as first right of refusal should the owner wish to sell so that the township could purchase um, part of the land or sever it or you know come up with some type of arrangement prior to the sale uh, to keep it in the public purse if that's what we chose to do. Uh, the lease would also uh, outline items such as timelines for renewal, maintenance expectations and a site plan of the exact lands in question. We need to look at, at all options, and one option is going to be the perfect fit. Carl, go ahead. Um, I would support my colleague uh, Watts um, on looking at severing because um, even though we have a right to first right of refusal in five years with the escalating price of waterfront property, um, it's going to be a lot higher five years from now than right now. So uh, I would encourage um, that kind of because like Common law would suggest that this this water, I think our grandchildren even swam there, or learned to swim there many, many years ago. So it's uh, it's been in the community for many, many years. So uh, I think we got to look at uh, some kind of purchase uh, either from the new owner or the previous owner. So would it be fair then for someone to offer a motion up to have staff investigate all options from all points of view? and come back with some solid uh, options for us to do. Is that reasonable? Yep, go ahead, Tom. Sure go I, ahead, I, Tom. I, I would certainly make that motion that we authorize staff to go ahead and uh, and come back with our, you know, to view all options available. Um, and I mean, our we know what our choice one is. Our choice one would be to uh, purchase, but uh, come back with all options and let council, uh, let's see where it goes from there. A second to that motion, please. Sheila. Sheila. 
Call for the vote then. Mar Martina Any other discussion? Her. Sorry, Martina. what was that, Carl? Martina has her hand up. Oh, sorry, Martina. That's Go ahead. Me, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just a point of clarification. When uh, Councillor Watt said all options, does that include the lease option as well? I just want mm -hmm. to be clear on the information. Yes. yes we need we to compare more. apples and apples and oranges and oranges and so we can have every, everything on the table. Yeah. Is that correct, Mr. Watt? Yes, that's correct. Okay, let's call for the vote. All in favor? All opposed? That motion is approved. Thank you very much. Moving ahead now to a couple of events that are coming to the community that are coming to every community, I suppose, in, in the country and in the world. And uh, Duro Dummer is certainly no exception. And that's Remembrance Day, which is coming up in November and also the Santa Claus Parade that we've always had success with uh, in the past at the end of November. So uh, Jess, I'm going to let you uh, talk about the uh, the options that we have and council are going to have to make some decisions here, keeping in mind the reality of COVID-19 and perhaps a, a new wave of nasties uh, coming up. We hope not, but there we are. Jess, go ahead. Can't hear you. How about now? That's yeah. better. All right. Um, this is the time of year when staff begin to turn our attention towards planning the Remembrance Day ceremony and Santa Claus parade. This year, the implementation. Could I get you to get a little closer to the computer? We can barely hear you. How about now? That's better. Okay. So this year, the implications and restrictions imposed by COVID-19 must be considered for both events. Uh, to help staff determine areas of concern regarding the events, a number of organizations were contacted, including the constituency office of our local MP, Peterborough Public Health, and the Office of the Fire Marshal and Emergency Management, Ontario. While no orders were found that would force the cancellation of our events, there are a number of general concerns involved for both that include that outside gatherings are limited to 100 people, physical distancing requirements are in place, even if you're outdoors or spectators attend in a vehicle. Pinch points need to be addressed to avoid forcing people together. Um, those over 70 years of age are encouraged to self-isolate and avoid crowds. Serving of buffet-style food is not permitted, nor is handing out candy along a parade route. Shared microphones may be problematic since any equipment it's used must be cleaned and disinfected as frequently as necessary uh, to maintain a sanitary condition. And an impermeable barrier must be erected between musicians and the audience for live music. So regarding financial implications, there would be the additional staff time to prepare and implement solutions to challenges and COVID-19 related expenses, such as personal protective equipment and cleaning or disinfecting solutions. So the recommendation is that the CAO report 2020-50 dated September 8, 2020, regarding the Remembrance Day Ceremony and Santa Claus Parade during COVID-19 be received, and that Council advise staff if and how to proceed with the Remembrance Day Ceremony and Santa Claus Parade planning this year. Okay, let's uh, thank you for that, Jess. And it's reality. I mean, the community as a whole, we've lost what the Duro doings, we've We've lost uh, the Norwood Fair. We've lost, for, it's just the way it is here in 2020. And uh, we can only hope and pray that 2021 be, uh, brings a better situation to us all. So we've got two events here and I'll, I'll speak first of all for Remembrance Day, which has kind of been my, my little baby, I guess, over the years. And we've worked with uh, Jess and a volunteer committee. And uh, I'm determined one way or the other to have some kind of a Remembrance Day service uh, ceremony. It will, uh, it's the least we can do. And I'm certainly willing, I'm gonna call a meeting, I hope of our volunteer committee to, to find ways to do this. There's all kinds of potential. We maybe could live stream it to, uh, to our YouTube channel. Uh, we can put it through an FM radio signal with people in their vehicles. There's all kinds of, but we're going to have a Remembrance Day service. If I have to stand there by myself, we're, we're going to do that. Santa Claus Parade. Sorry, it's just not a responsible thing to do. That's my opinion. I'll hear from the rest of council. Go ahead, Tom. I totally agree with you. Uh, I, I would be very remiss if we couldn't have some kind of a Remembrance Day uh, ceremony. It's, it's respective. It's, it's, it's expected. It's 
you know, something we have to do. Uh, there, there is ways around, and, and your committee, I'm sure, is going to have a lot of, uh, of good uh, suggestions, stuff like that. I mean, number one, even if we have a parade going down to the cenotaph, people are going to wear masks at the, at the cenotaph. We're going to have to wear a mask. It's a little different these days, but I do agree totally we do have to have a Remembrance Day parade. The Santa Claus parade one, as much as I would hate to see it not happen because it has been tradition, it's not the end of the world, not one if we have to postpone it for another year. Um, you know, we can we can still live stream a, a, a just something, you know, just a, the tree lighting or something, you know, just a quick thing out of council meeting, whatever, say here, you know what, Merry Christmas to everyone and light the tree up and, and have it on there just as a little video in one of our meetings, you know, something along that line, but I don't think that one is as necessary to me. Yep, you're right on the money. Thank you, Tom. Sheila, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I just uh, found out today that the lions in Lakefield are not going to be producing or putting on a Santa Claus parade. And Jerry, you're responsible. Yep. I, I think it would be the wrong thing to do. Yep. Well, I had one of the volunteers of the parade committee call me a couple of weeks ago and say that she didn't think we should be doing it for a wide variety of reasons. And I, I agree with uh, Tom that if we could do something, um, maybe the council meeting after the parade would have taken place and have a little thing on our on our YouTube council meeting. I think that would yeah, we could good. We could indeed do a, a, a break in our council meeting and do a live presentation of the tree being lit up. Uh, very easy, a, yeah, a five so minute I'm, little jovial thing. So, so I mean, it, if, if Sheila and Tom wanna to look after coordinating that little event, then more power to you. I'll, I'll dig into Remembrance Day if that's a, if that's a good thing. Sheila? Just if I may add one more thing, if anybody else, on council or staff had any good ideas, um, yep. you know, please let us know. <laughs> yep. But yes, we, I'll work with Tom on it. I ho ho hope it works out well. Carl, go ahead. Yeah, just uh, for the Remembrance Day uh, committee, uh, one other opportunity might be to set up a, a memory wall similar to what uh, 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 funeral homes do when somebody passes away. Uh, maybe a section of our website could be for people to add comments. Uh, mm -hmm. Good idea. It's something that people like to do. And uh, there's maybe a family member that they remember or other things that they remember or want to say to the community. And it would be an opportunity to add comments. Okay, I would strongly suggest then that if, uh, if Sheila and Tom could look after the, the, the Santa end of things, I'll look after the Remembrance Day end of things. And uh, in the next meeting or the meeting after, if we can all come back to report on a way we can do this. Go ahead, Heather. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I've been listening to the comments with great interest, of course, as a person who uh, on council who works with the Canada Day Parade Committee. These were um, conversations that our committee had back earlier this summer when we unfortunately uh, chose to cancel the parade. Um, I, I certainly agree with what uh, my colleagues are saying about making sure that Remembrance Day uh, commemoration of some sort goes forward in a modified way and uh, doing something simple that uh, respects physical distancing and gatherings for uh, the Santa Claus parade to recognize the holidays. Um, one question I do have, however, uh, through you to Jeff, um, where your staff, your report is somewhat silent on staff resources. Obviously, these events, even in a modified way and making sure safety protocols are happening, will require some staff resources. Do we have, I know staff are dealing with their own challenges in conducting the normal business and routine of, um, of the municipality. Do we have those resources to, to support uh, these, these initiatives internally in light of what's going on? Are you guys able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I think that might be uh, a question best answered after we get together with our committee, as they may be able to shoulder a little bit more of the burden um, and uh, let staff work through we need, what we need to every day. I have no question in my mind that the amount of work that it's going to take, I think, is quite doable on a volunteer basis by everyone concerned. I, Knowing our staff, I don't, I can't really see that as being an issue. Martina. And, and I agree. I know staff are quite 
committed to helping with these events uh, historically, but I also know staff are dealing with a lot of other, uh, you know, personal and job related challenges during these times as well. So we don't necessarily even want to add burden to them on these times. So uh, as much as I support what my colleagues are saying about moving forward in this modified way for both of these events, uh, just recognizing um, the, the implications that it would have on staff. Martina. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, just to address the staff resource question, um, as Councillor Watson has alluded to, there is uh, it is very busy in the office these days and, and many people have taken on new tasks. Uh, we typically do assign one staff member to the Remembrance Day Parade and one staff member to the Santa Claus Parade. Uh, as Jess has alluded to as well, I think if those committees are willing to put forth um, a heightened uh, push this year for both of those events. I think they are doable, um, but we do need to be aware that staff uh, resources are stretched thin and we uh, we do need to be respectful of the day-to-day -day responsibilities we have as well on top of these special events. So I'm sure we, we do want to put them on, but uh, if those committees can provide more support, I think that would uh, really go a long way. I could assure you 190% that I can get as many volunteers as you <laughs> want to make Remembrance Day happen. So that, that's not. That would help, that would be wonderful. Okay, I would like then a motion, I guess, that uh, council officially uh, cancel the Santa Claus Parade as we know it and refer uh, to virtual possibilities with Sheila and Tom and that Remembrance Day be handled in a safe manner uh, under uh, myself and Jessica and anyone else who wants to help to make that happen and that we report back at a future meeting on how we're going to pull all this off, but we're going to do it. Do you want to repeat that motion, Tom? Because I have no idea what I said. <laughs> Tom moved it silently. Oh. You're muted, Tom. I, I I almost had it word for word. Right after you said, <laughs> okay, <what> here. <laughs> all right, Good. no, I would I would be happy to make a motion that we... Uh, that we do cancel the Santa Claus parade this year as per normal and that Sheila and myself uh, come up with a virtual way of actually still putting something forth for the township and any uh, extra help that uh, is deemed necessary and that you, Mr. Mayor and uh, the staff member and anyone else you can get also uh, work on the uh, safe and, and uh, proper way to do the Remembrance Day Parade because we will not be canceling it Good. for any reason. Well done. That. Sheila is going to be the seconder. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? All opposed? That motion is approved. So Jess, we'll talk uh, later. We'll be getting a meeting of our volunteer committee together, ASAP, and uh, we can move on with that. Thank you for that report. Okay, committee minutes, other reports, none. We have no bylaws tonight. We have one action item uh, under correspondence and that's from the Minister of Agriculture, a letter to introduce the Security from Trespass and Protecting Food Safety Act that protect farmers, agri-food businesses, farm animals, and food supply. What is your wish? Carl? I move to receive and support and perhaps we could try to solicit further support on our website from uh, people from the agricultural community. Because this, well, I'll, if somebody seconds it, I have further comments. Is that your motion then to, uh, to support and to promote it on our website? Yes. That's it. Seconder from Heather. Go ahead then, Carl. Anybody want to say anything else? Uh, some other, uh, other members of council have been um, uh, aware of some of the issues going on here that's uh, really affecting agricultural people and even people that are trucking livestock to markets are having serious problems with um, dropping off for a Tim Hortons of coffee and people approaching the vehicle and tampering with the livestock in the vehicle and uh, this is a serious issue that's really cutting into the rights of agricultural people to to raise or to to practice agriculture. So I'm fully supportive of it. Okay, any other discussion on the motion in support? Call for the vote, all in favor? All opposed? 
That motion is approved. We have one information item, community focus bulletin from the city of Peterborough. Motion to receive that, please. Tom and Sheila, discussion. All in favor? All opposed? That motion is approved as well. We have no accounts. We have no notices of motion that I'm aware of. Uh, are there any public announcements anyone would uh, like to make? Any heads up? Community events? Nothing? Okay. And uh, I'm going to entertain a motion to go sorry, into... Uh, sorry, just, Martina? I apologize for interrupting. I believe Councillor Watson did have an announcement that she was uh, wanting to mention. Oh, I didn't see a hand. Go, go ahead. That's okay. It uh, certainly was uh, nothing that you won't hear about in the coming days, but I just uh, stepped out of a library board meeting earlier this afternoon, and the library is uh, in the process of getting ready to open their doors on the 29th of September, uh, once again to patrons beyond the e-services. So I just wanted to report that to council, uh, if you're hearing from constituents, and I'm sure there'll be more notice given to the community in, in the coming days. I've had a number of people ask me about that, so that's very timely. That's good to hear, 29th. Carl? Yes, uh, you will be hearing uh, news reports today. There is one COVID uh, positive uh, that's an employee at uh, Fairhaven. Um, I just want to assure you as a board member, it's well under control. Uh, the whole process has kicked into gear today for testing all residents and all staff. Um, and more, more information to come. And uh, I feel quite confident that it will be a very controlled uh, outbreak, but it will remain as an outbreak until it can be resolved. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we are going to go into a closed session and that portion of the meeting uh, will not be live streamed on YouTube, will not be recorded. So we're gonna have to take a couple of minutes off and uh, let our control people uh, turn off the recording and then we will come back. So I would like a motion to go into closed session. Uh, matters about identifiable individuals, including municipal or local board employees pursuant to the Ontario Municipal Act. Could I have that uh, motion, please? Sheila, seconded by Carl. All in favor? All opposed? That motion is approved. We're in closed session. We're going to take uh, just a couple of minutes uh, break and uh, get reset here on the, uh, the YouTube. And we'll be right back. If you want to mute, uh, mute yourself, please. We'll be back uh, following the, uh, the screen logo. <laughs> 